What can I say? I really like castles. Medieval settings always have an undeniable charm that I just can't deny. And Minecraft tends to be the perfect medium to create castles and all sorts of medieval buildings. Unfortunately, my building skills barely surpass my ability to wake up on Mondays, so I thought today I could upgrade someone else's castle with a few command gadgets. Anyway, in order to ask you to subscribe, I had thought about doing some stupid meta thing where I talk about how hard it is to ask you without coming across as obnoxious. But then I thought, hey, instead, let's do a double meta thing where I talk about why I'm not doing the meta thing. Okay, here we are with our lovely castle. Uh, the download link to this will be in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Um, apparently this is actually technically Hogwarts, which, I'll be completely honest with you, that's not quite what I had in mind at all. I don't have anything against Harry Potter or anything, of course, you know, great books, great movies, whatnot. It's just, now this whole video is sort of tied to Harry Potter, which was not my intention at all, but whatever, it doesn't matter at all. Alright, um, I got a few ideas for things I want to make. I'm gonna try to keep it relatively simple, because I've noticed that lately all my videos have been increasing in length and in complexity. Which is generally okay, but I think every once in a while it's probably a good idea to step back and do sort of a more light video. The first thing I'd sort of like to make is like a wizard tower. I'm a little bit amusing given that I suppose all of these are wizard towers. <laughs> but what I mean is I'm thinking I'd like there to be a tower, probably this one, and uh, I'd like you to be able to sort of stand up here and right click and you'll sort of shoot fireballs. So we're going to want, I think, for right-click detection, as always, we're going to want sort of a ring of villagers. So now you can run up to the edge and click on any of these guys, and yeah. Alright, I'd say that's a little bit better. I actually set up a second row of villagers, because the first one, you know, I want you to be able to shoot up in the air, I guess. Not quite sure why that would be helpful, but whatever. We're starting to run into that ever-present problem of where do we put our command blocks, and I'm thinking the answer today... I'm just gonna put them up in the ceiling. All right, let's see, our ring of villagers is now invisible, and if we click on one, there it is. <laughs> it summons a fireball, however, it does not yet have any motion. Um, speaking of which, I think it's time to set its motion, which I think we can just do with a bit of shoot facing. At a time like this, I never know whether or not to explain shoot facing again, because I've explained it in past videos, but I doubt everyone watching this has seen those videos. So I guess in brief terms, shoot facing is a way of making an object move in the direction a player is looking by teleporting an entity forward from 0, 0, 0, and then modifying the projectile's motion from the 0, 0, 0 entity's position. Okie dokie artichokey, uh, let's see if this is working. This is first test, so I'd be surprised. Yeah, look at that. Nice, nice. Okay, I'm kind of predicting that this will actually work. Wow, no! Okay, now I'm actually hoping it will work. Wow, 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 wow! Oh my god, please say it ain't so. I have been messing around with random junk this whole time, and I think there were a few other things that was broken, but I accidentally had it set to position instead of pause. For some reason it's pause, not position. To get the position of an entity, maybe, maybe, maybe. It got the wrong one, but the idea is there. Um, you saw it was kind of lagging behind. That's because it should actually be power, I think, because power is sort of a special thing for fireballs, which is supposed to propel them forward faster, I guess. So hopefully that'll make them actually move quickly. It looks like it, but it's still slowing down a lot. I think I know the problem. For some reason, I hadn't actually included a check to make sure that the person had actually ch uh, clicked on a villager. Um, in order to see if it should, like, change the motion of the fireball. So I was trying to do it even when I hadn't clicked, which meant that the armor stand was right at zero, zero, which meant that it would be getting no motion. That's too fast. <laughs> All right, maybe if we just don't teleport the armor stand forward quite so much. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable speed, actually. All right, so now that that is working properly, I would like to add in a little something extra, just to spice it up a bit. I feel like the classic thing for this kind of projectile is like the projectile gets stronger and bigger the further it travels. So I think the way we can accomplish that is with a scoreboard that counts up one every single tick. 
and then modifies the explosion power uh, based on its scoreboard objective. So I guess let's see if that's working. I think it despawned before I hit the wall. Let's try it here. Hmm. All right. Um, a little bit of tweaking later, and I think we have something that I'm moderately happy with. So, uh, sorry Hogwarts, but you are officially getting destroyed. Here, wait, can we hit, like, maybe way down at the edge of the shore there? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh yeah, that's what we like to see. Alright, uh, next thing I want to do is some sort of, like, castle gate, almost. And, uh, I'm gonna go real old school with this son. And by old school, <laughs> I mean I'm going to do something incredibly simple that I loved to do back in the day. So say you're just a naive little intruder, just looking forward to having a good time storming the castle. And you know, you run on up and oh, the gate's wide open, but then oh no, ah, oh, struck down by the power of Zeus himself. <laughs> yeah, you know, I said I was going <laughs> to make it more simple, I have to wonder whether this is a bit too simple. Alright, what should come next after these lightning bolts? You know, I'm thinking we got fire, obviously. We have an excessive amount of lightning over at our front gate. I'm thinking it's time to take a look at what's surrounding this island, which is the water. Alright, so once again, keeping it relatively simple. Uh, in order to demonstrate, I'm going to have to play both the uh, sort of defender and the attacker in this scenario, because I have no friends. So, say, oh my god, you're here at the gate and you see an intruder coming up. Oh no! So you go back and press this basically invisible button, and then the intruder is going to be like, oh no, it's water! <laughs> and so they can try to climb up, but ah, oh, they're gonna get swept back down by the torrential flood. You know, amusingly enough, all that water flows down the main path into this, you know, tiny little pool, so um, I, I really wish the people would be trying to attack from over here, because this is a little bit more impressive, but, you know, unfortunately the terrain is just such that it doesn't really work out quite right. But you know, hey, that's fine, I like it, I like it. You know, sometimes, sometimes simplicity is best. So, you might not think that simplicity is so great. You also might be wondering, why go to all these measures to, you know, protect Hogwarts? I mean, who'd really be that interested in attacking a diseased pig? Well, I'm thinking the answer to both those questions is, I'm going to make a nice little vault. And this vault's gonna have absolutely zero protection. I mean, the protection is just for the castle itself. However, the vault is going to look absolutely sick. Do people still say sick, or do I just sound dumb now? Whatever. Yeah, I want there to be like a massive door that can like swing open. So I'm thinking this whole door is going to revolve around this little thing here. Effectively what this is, is it's a bunch of minecarts. And minecarts can have blocks in them. And also, for some reason, you can modify the height above the minecart that the block is displayed. I'm not quite sure why that's a thing, but it's really helpful now. Because it means that instead of having to summon, like, whatever, 15 different armor stands for every single block here to move it smoothly, we can instead just summon three, and each of them can have five minecarts on them that it's riding. Hold on a minute. I have made a terrible mistake. Minecart blocks are smaller than real blocks. Alright everybody, new plan, we're just gonna be summoning 15 different falling blocks, yeah! Okay. Um, I'm thinking this won't actually be too bad. You know, we've already got the door in place, it doesn't move yet, but that's fine. It will move eventually, hopefully. Um, guess what? I made another <laughs> mistake, and I'm really just, I'm doing a great job today. You cannot actually rotate falling blocks. Mojang, or Mojang if you're edgy, please fix this. 
I'm at a bit of a loss uh, as for what to do now. Well, it looks like we're gonna fall back on the old reliable, which is sliding doors. Um, I literally just did these in a video like a few weeks ago, so I'm kind of reluctant to do it again now, but I don't have too much of a choice at this point. And I'm gonna tell you the truth, sliding doors always look good, okay, so literally don't complain. Alright, let's just see if this is working. I kind of think it should, but if we just change this one little scoreboard objective, it moves down very, very, very laggily. Well, that's disappointing because I promised it would look good and it does not at all. <laughs> well, um, the good news is this here button is finally working. Uh, the bad news is it still looks terrible. Um, I think the problem is just when you're trying to move this many things around at once, Minecraft can't quite handle it. I don't know. In retrospect, I maybe sort of could have made it work with the um, minecarts, because as I recall, rotating the minecart did rotate the block uh, that was in it. So um, I'd say this video <laughs> did not go at all according to plan. I mean, we got one really good thing. This wizard tower, absolutely amazing. I love blowing stuff up so much, and this makes it super easy to do. We've also got a few things that are extraordinarily simple, but, you know, still rather fun. So I'm not going to complain about those too much, because, you know, like I said, they're fun. So who cares how simple they are? And then we got this, you know, one thing which just... It just it didn't go according to plan at all, and we tried our hardest, and this was the best we got. Just for the heck of it, I killed off two-thirds of the falling blocks to see if it would make it any smoother. No, it did not. Hmm. Alright, I've killed off all but one, and it's still not smooth. And you know what that tells me? That tells me that the problem is not actually that there's too many falling blocks, it's that they're not riding armor stands. Hang on, wait, I don't have a lot of time, but... Okay, I am so relieved. I went ahead and set up the armor stands, and it actually works. It's still a bit jiggly, for, you know, lack of a better word, um, but at least it works. Well, now I think we can call this video a success. So, thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. You know, all stupid double meta jokes aside or whatever, you know, subscribe if you enjoy the content, because it really helps me out a lot. You know, that is to say, it helps my ego out a lot, and I don't actually get anything out of it yet. But regardless, um, I will see you all soon, hopefully. Bye.